A surprisingly big time matchup for these two teams at this point in the season, Jalen Brunson back to help the New York Knicks start a new streak in Sacramento against your third seed in the West, the Kings. And let's just say the left-handed stars were getting to the minus. You see what I did there? The minus opponents inside. Other end, it's R.J. Barrett rocking that thing. Not to be outdone by De'Aaron Fox on the same type of time, same type of grind. This Kentucky on Kentucky crime is just disgraceful. Malik Monk going right at Julius Randle, not once. Switch, switch, make it twice. Monk putting the Kings up by 20. Knicks trying to cut into their deficit. They get some very bad news on this play. As Bronson attacks the rim, you see R.J. Barrett come away with a bucket, but it's more about that starting point guard for New York. Left this game with some foot issues. He has been struggling down the stretch to stay healthy for a really good New York team that's been winning without him. Third quarter, Barrett with the score inside, doing all he can to compensate for Brunson's absence. It's also Rando leaking out and being rewarded. Quinn Grimes cuts the Knicks deficit down to just six. We got a tie game, ladies and gentlemen, in the fourth. And that's when De'Aaron Fox says, enough of this Knicks stuff. It's time for the Kings to come out. Fox on a 10-zip run, creating some distance once again for the Kings. 15 of his 23 points came in the fourth. Grimes, one more time. Foot's not on the line, which means he gets three for that. Knicks down by three. More Kentucky on Kentucky crime. This time around, the perpetrator is Lyles. And then Sabonis, he didn't go to Kentucky, but he did have his ninth triple-double of the season in this one, 24, 13, and 10. Sabonis trying to crash the boards late. Actually, is going to end up with Randall taking advantage of it and scoring. Knicks down two. They need a stop in the worst way with 26 seconds to go. And guess who again? Fox says enough is enough. Good night, New York, for good. 122-117 is your final from Sacramento. Don't look now. The Kings are about to take over the number two seed out west. They're 39 and 26 on the season. I'm one of those guys that had to wait until the New York Knicks winning streak was over until I properly assessed their basketball team. I was like, look, they're hot right now. Julius Randle just playing out of his mind since February. Let's wait until the streak is over and see where they're at. They lost the streak against the Charlotte Hornets, and then they lose a big-time matchup against one of the West best in the Sacramento Kings. There is a spot in this game against the Kings. Knicks are down four. They put the ball in the hands of their best player, a guy that y'all know I've raved about Julius Randle on this platform multiple times this year. They put the ball in the hands of Randle, and Randle loses the rock. He turns the ball over. And I bring it up for a reason. Against the Celtics a couple games ago, the Knicks actually put the ball in the hands of Emmanuel quickly down the stretch for the most part. Against the Heat a couple games back as well, Julius Randle, they put the ball in the hands of you know in his hands again. He actually loses the rock a couple times, but gets it back and just makes this off balance three pointer. That's a very unique situation that probably is not going to happen in the playoffs. You know, unfortunately for Randle, as great a player he is, one of my favorites so far this year, Randle's moves can oftentimes get predictable. Obviously, in the playoffs, these are going to be very tough, tiresome, gruesome physical games where dudes are going to be locked in. These are going to be series. And if you've seen in the past, Randall has struggled when teams are able to zone in on him for four to seven games for a two-week stretch. They've made it difficult on Randall. I'd argue at the star level, if you think Randall's a star, I do, Randall's moves are probably as predictable we got from a star in the league. And again, he's great. He's able to maneuver around it, but... I've heard many guys talk about, you know, how predictable Randall can be. And I think that kind of goes to why he's losing the rock oftentimes late in games. Guys are predicting his moves. When the focal point is on Randall in late in games, playoffs, 
he has nicked. And what I mean by that is lost the ball. I hope the Knicks are able to have some success. I just think the playoffs are so much better when the Knicks are good. I want them to get past the first round. Uh, unfortunately, if they're going to get past the first round, they're most likely going to have to take out a team like Miami in the first round. And that's, man, that's just going to be a tall task for anybody. You, you let me know in the comment section below, do you believe this variation of the New York Knicks is serious? It is worth noting that the Knicks didn't have Jalen Brunson on the tail end of this winning streak. Brunson is a guy, in theory, you can put the ball in the hands down the stretch and he's going to make a good play. Oftentimes for himself, sometimes he can make a play for a guy like Randall. And maybe in these scenarios, you'd be better suited just to get the ball to Randall where all he's got to do is make one move and score or just knock down a jump shot. So Brunson not being around for the Knicks on the, in the back end of this, this winning streak, and obviously now they're on a losing streak, that is a big deal. He'll be back, and we'll see whether the Knicks are able to go with this thing this year. I like the energy in New York. It does feel better. I think Julius Randle should be in the outside MVP convo when you get past the Giannis's and Jokic's and, and obviously the Embiid's and Luka's. Right outside there, somewhere around Luka, I do believe Randle's name deserves to be in that running for MVP. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the Knicks' chances this year to make some real noise in the Eastern Conference playoffs.